Hey Transit family, it is time for another midweek. So this week we're going to be finishing up our series called Moods. And in this series we've been talking about our feelings, our emotions, and our, our moods that we experience. And we've been looking at what it looks like to handle our moods in a healthy way. In a way that doesn't let us control, that doesn't let them control us. In a way that doesn't let them be the boss of us. So today we're going to tackle one of the very last ones that we're going to talk about, and that is guilt. And let me ask you this question. What would you do if you knew you could get away with anything? What would you do if you could get away with it? And if you knew there was no punishment, no consequences, and no regrets? Maybe stay up all night and play video games, or mm, spend all your parents' money on stuff that you want, or get one of everything from your favorite store. For me, I would probably want to hack into my teacher's computers and give myself straight A's because that's probably the only way I'm actually going to get straight A's. But here's the reality of what where we live and one that you have to accept. There are consequences for our actions. Now, many people in your generation, in my generation and younger, they don't accept that. They don't believe that that's true, but you have to accept it. There are consequences. So let's just go ahead. Let's be honest with everyone and admit that we all have thought, felt guilty and guilt at some point in our lives. Now, what is guilt? Guilt is a mood or a feeling that we experience when we've done something we know we shouldn't have done. Okay, you're gonna have, there could be shame, regret, uh, that could feel this weight of the world when you feel like you've made a mistake. And there's a couple kind of guilts out there. There's the false guilt. And this is when we feel guilty about something, but we're not actually guilty of anything. And then there's the real guilt. And that's when we feel guilty because we are actually guilty. You did what you did, or you said you did. So what do we do? What happens to us when we feel guilt? Well, some of us, we ignore it, we deny it, we pretend like it's not even there, and maybe it'll go away. Some of us struggle because we don't really feel bad about our actions. We're like, that's not wrong, that's not that bad. And then some of us feel mad at ourselves for what we did. Why would I do something like that? The feeling of guilt isn't a bad thing because it's a sign that there's something off and something needs to change inside of me. And that's a good thing. The problem is with guilt it is when we let it control us and it, it bosses us into believing that something isn't true about ourselves. And so we're gonna look at, the, at a guy in the Bible named Paul. Paul was an incredible leader who did a lot of amazing things to spread the message of Jesus and to grow the early church. But he wasn't always that person. Before Paul had an experience with Jesus that changed his life, Paul was known as a guy named Saul. And Saul did a bunch of terrible things to people, to Christians in general, uh, specifically to Christians. And if anyone would have had plenty of reasons to feel guilt, it would have been this guy. And so he tells us in the book of Romans, he explained that, listen, if we believe in Jesus, there is no condemnation. Jesus took the weight of our mistakes with him when he died on the cross. And he replaced our guilt with the power of his spirit. And we see this in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. So now there is, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Here's the good word today for us. Because of Jesus, guilt does not have to be the boss of us. Guilt can control us if we let it. But Jesus gives us a whole other option, a chance to start over by giving us grace. So listen, we can find freedom from guilt when we follow Jesus by doing a couple of things. First one, not being so hard on ourselves and embracing the grace that Jesus gives us to live a guilt-free life. And then... The next one, not being so hard on others and extending grace and forgiveness to them. So here's the thing. Give yourself grace and give other people grace. And then the, another one, letting guilt remind us of what we've done, but not letting it define us. Now think about that again. I want you to hear that. Letting guilt remind us of what we've done, but not letting it define us. That's a solid word you can take home today. You need to write that one down because that is a good word. And then the last one is, Making it right with people that we've hurt by number one, apologizing and trying to do better next time and learning from our mistakes. So here we go. Bottom line, remember this, guilt doesn't have to be the boss of you. So before we log off, I want you to remember that tonight at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary, we have a screening of In His Image. And it's a short film that's gonna help us as a church 
start to answer some culturally controversial questions about gender and sexuality from a very biblical perspective. Um, and then next week, we're going to be able to be in the building for our very next gathering, the very first one of 2021. And we can't wait. We can't wait to see you there. Um, it's going to be a fun night. Both of the meetings are at 6.30 p.m. So let's pray, and then we'll sign off. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for just loving us. God, thank you that we don't have to live a, a guilt life. And God, help us to, to have that guilt in our life so we know that we did something wrong. But Lord, help us not to let it define who we are. And God, we, def we put our identity in you and not in the feelings and the moods and the guilt that, that we, uh, we experience in our life sometimes. And God, we're so thankful that we don't live under the condemnation. God, we thank you for your life-giving spirit that lives inside of us. Help us to live that out every single day. Lord, help us to be grace-filled. Help us to be forgiving and give grace to ourselves and give grace to other people. Lord, help us take this, this just message today, apply it into our life. Lord, live it out every day. God, help these students not just do this because we're saying it, but God, help them to dive into this passage and, and, and put it into their hearts and live it out every single day. Day. So God, I pray over the next couple weeks that the, the events that we have tonight and next week are just going to be honoring and glorifying to you. Lord, help us to understand. Let us have open hearts and open ears and open minds to, to hear what you want to say, Lord, about these topics. God, just to let us have a, a heart for people, um, and, and especially people that may not look like us or act like us or believe like us. God, help us to love them like you love them and help us to have uh, your, your eyes for them, not our eyes and the way that we see them. So God, help us to be like that. Help us to be more like you. Lord, we love you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Talk to you later.